Without doubt, the single most common criticism of me and my channel and my topics and my videos is that I overthink this whole hobby way too much. I suck the fun out of it. The truth is, though, that is the fun for me. I've been aware that I kind of like the hard fun, that problem solving, overcoming obstacles, analyzing a problem and unpicking it, reading great reams of information to try and draw out the lessons. That's my fun when it comes to the watch hobby. It's called hard fun. There's a whole classification around it. I knew what I was into. I'd never really thought about what other people get out of this hobby. I do watch often what you do and I'm astounded about why do you enjoy that and what's fun in that. So I've spent the last week reflecting and going off and doing some research and I've found four different kinds of fun. This comes out of the gaming industry but I think it applies to us in this hobby as well and it's probably worth a bit of a chat. See you after the intro. There's an old joke, trying to take a joke apart to see what makes it funny is kind of like conducting an autopsy. The patient rarely survives the operation. And there's a real risk of that in trying to analyze fun to break it down into its constituent parts and think about the different kinds of fun that there is to have. That said, I reckon we can do it in a way that is reasonably interesting. So I'm gonna do a whole video on this. As I said, I think in the intro, unsurprisingly, most analysis of what people think of as fun comes out of the gaming industry because they make their money this way. And when someone makes money a certain way, they tend to put a bit of effort into figuring out what's going on. The gaming industry generally thinks of there being four types of fun. The hard fun that I've already kind of mentioned, the stuff I'm into, the kind of real-time strategy, coming up with ways of problem-solving, finding your way forward, emphasizing skill and thought and, and, and sort of overcoming obstacles, really not wanting to fail because there's a big consequence of that. That's kind of hard fun. There is the opposite to that, which is obviously going to be called easy fun. This is stuff where you just explore, you enjoy yourself, you have a great time. It's the Minecraft of games. You might fail, but big deal. The consequences aren't that great and we can make failing fun in a way. Then after that, there's serious fun. This is gaming for people that want to really get something out of it, not just in the game, but perhaps even in the wider world. And they're really into this. And not only do they want to get something out of it, but they don't want to have to experiment. They don't want to have to overcome too many obstacles. They really just want to grind it out. Um, and so for these guys, it's all about repetition and gradual improvement in a, in a thing which is well known and well understood. Then you've got people fun. And these are the guys that get most of their enjoyment from a game or from a hobby, not necessarily through the activities in the game, but rather through the social element that the game creates. So whether it's you know playing whatever game it is, is less important than the way it brings the people that are playing that game together to have whatever social life around it. Now, you, I think it's actually pretty easy to see the kind, how that would translate into a watch kind of community. Sticking with the hard fun, start with myself. That is very definitely where I would see myself fitting. What does that mean in terms of being a, wa a watch enthusiast? It might mean, for example, that I set myself problems come up with a collection of vintage Alpinas that shows the entire um, uh, sort of history of the brand, come up with a range of travel watches that show all the different ways of travel watches being used and implemented and that sort of thing. Um, it could mean a whole bunch of other issues, come up with a collection that all use you know, different movements, the same movements, 
just stuff like that. I think you're going to find a lot of the people I've previously described as curators in this area. They're people who have set themselves a problem and they see the watch collecting as a way of identifying the problem, finding strategies to overcome it, implementing those strategies, and then scoring points along the way as you fill slots in the box, as you take steps towards the goal that you've set yourself. At the other end, you've got the easy fun guys. And these would be, I can think of no better example of this than Bruce Williams over on the Bruce Williams channel. He talks about himself as a watch, in a, a watch, I think what's he called? A watch experience collector. He makes it very clear. He has no interest in owning a large number of watches over a long period of time. He's very happy with watches coming in and out, moving them on really quite quickly. Uh, he doesn't want to form strong bonds with his watches. In fact, his most recent State of the Collection video, he spoke about the problem that he's experiencing because he has formed strong bonds with his watches and he wants to keep changing them over, but he's kind of stuck. Um, I think in a, in a comment, he, he said something like, he wants to be the ultimate watch anarchist. I can think of no clearer example of a person who's who's in that easy fun. I just want to have experience and explore phase of or style of watch collector. Continuing around the circle, what would the what does serious fun look like in uh, the watch community? I think these are the guys and this understanding the idea of serious fun really helps you understand the Rolex crowd. I mean, if you look at Rolex, I've, I've joked about Rolex Tube, a, a collection, a constellation of YouTubers and commenters and Instagrammers um, who all kind of circulate around the same channel, all circulate around one brand, maybe half a dozen watches, maybe another half a dozen topics, and just consistently cycle through those same things two, three times a week, every week for years on end. And they love it. They love the grind. They love, while the rest of us are all bemoaning the fact that Rolex never brings us anything new, they celebrate it. They love it. They think that one of the best things about Rolex is that you can look at a Submariner now and set yourself that goal and say, in 10 years' time, I can just chunk away and I can be confident there's still going to be a Submariner, plus or minus a few percent, there for sale for me. Those guys celebrate the grind. They celebrate that iterative, just grind away and repeat the same thing over and over again. That's their, that's their fun. And they get off on it particularly because it has, as we mentioned before, real world tangible benefits. It changes their life. The, that's one of the reasons why resale value becomes so important to these guys because it's really important for someone who's ex having serious fun for that fun to extend beyond the, for them to have fun, the benefits have to extend outside the game space, has to extend into other parts of their life. If you're able to sit there and say, I went through this grind and I got myself a Submariner and that Submariner is now worth more, you are definitely in serious fun space. Moving around the dial, we get to the social fun guys and there are a plethora of these guys in the watch community. I can think of no better example, and I mean better in the best possible sense. He is a great example of the best kind of these social fun people. Sanjay from Engineer Wannabe. You know, he's on every panel he can be on and he brings light and fun and this desire to be with other people and to know where they're going to everything he does. Um, he just, he'll, I imagine he goes to every red bar, every meetup he can, that he goes with his friends to go look at watches on weekends. And all of that is absolutely great. That's a fantastic way to be in the hobby and to really enjoy the hobby and to share it. It's not something I routinely do. Um, as more of an introvert, I prefer just talking to my camera a lot rather than being with real people. But I can see that... The, Whilst I don't feel it, the, the way that someone can enjoy that and have fun doing it is, is pretty obvious. And like I say, I think Sanjay, 
as a public face is a, is a great example of how that kind of works as fun. Okay, so why is it important to think about the kinds of fun and perhaps more importantly, where in that fun wheel we sit? I think for me, the first one is we only have so much time, so much energy, so much money to invest in this hobby. Every time you get involved in some sort of conversation that ends up going nowhere, every time you buy a watch and then have to pass it on and lose money on the exchange, except if you're one very specific kind of collector, then you are wasting time, energy, and money. And quite often I see that that's not because uh, I or the other person didn't know enough about the watch. It's more that we didn't know enough about ourselves and how that watch that we could barely have known more about was going to land with us. And I think that by thinking hard about who we are, by using tools such as this, thinking about the kinds of fun and giving it a label, giving it a name, trying to work through some of the, the characteristics of that, we're better placed to use our very limited resources and get the most fun out of this hobby and spend the least amount of time banging our head against the wall doing things that aren't going to make us happy. The second thing is... It can't be a bad thing to understand where other people are coming from as well. Maybe it can be as little as we just won't you know, waste their time telling them, giving them advice that's not suitable for them. If we have a better understanding that our way of looking at the world, our way of getting fun from this hobby might not be theirs. Secondly, maybe we'll just be a little bit more tolerant of how other people play this game of what they get out of it. And that can't be a bad thing, surely. Now, I fully understand most people don't live just in one part of, or I'll rephrase that, most people don't stay permanently in just one part of the fun wheel. I think most of us probably have a home base, a place where we spend most of our time, and then we take holidays in other places. I certainly, my home base is definitely the hard fun space, but I do take holidays in the social space and in the, the easy fun space. I've got nothing to do with the serious fun side. That's not mine, but I'll, I'll vacation in the other areas. I would love to know where you think your primary home base is. Where on the fun wheel do you park yourself most of the time? What kind of fun do you get out of this hobby? Fantastic if you put that in the comments below. Even better, I'm going to be running a poll over on the community tab on my channel page asking people which of the four fun types they think they generally fall into. Great if you can pop over there and give you give me your vote. I'd be really I'm fascinated to see where people put themselves. If you think if you disagree with how I've kind of characterized those ideas of fun in the watch community, we can have a chat about that below. Anyway, I've been Pete McConville. This has been Not So Obvious Watchers. Thank you so much for watching it. Hit the like and subscribe button. Don't say that anywhere near enough. And I'll see you later. Bye.